Unpopular opinion, bitless bridles are bad. Let's talk about that. My name's Katie, welcome to my channel, Horse Talk. If you're new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or yeah. On this channel, I'm gonna be talking about all the things that horse people don't like to talk about. Okay guys, so I'm gonna talk about bitless bridles and that's gonna be the theme of this video. However, I do feel that I need to respond to a few things that were said in the comments on my previous video. So if you wanna hear what I think about some of the comments that were left for me, go ahead and watch the video through, cause that'll be at the end. In my first debut video called Horse People Suck, the assumption was made that I said, bitless bridles are bad. Let's listen to what I actually said in the video and go from there. They're gonna think that you can just throw on a bitless bridle and go galloping down into the heavens and literally that's where you're gonna go is into the heavens because you're gonna fall off and die. You can't tell all these kids that they should ride bareback, bridleless, bitless, tackless, and all this other crap when half these kids you're talking to probably have never even taken a riding lesson in their entire life. Very clearly, I never said riding bitless is bad. So now that we watch that back and we know what I actually said, let's talk about my opinion on bitless bridles. If the chestnut mare comes walking out of the past, like the stall, just don't worry about her. I'm working on something with her, so she'll just be chilling in the background. Just don't mind the chestnut mare. Okay, yes, slightly dramatic, that's fine, but I was trying to make a point, okay? Not anyone or any horse should just be thrown into a bitless bridle. That's just stupidity. That's pure and utter stupidity, unless you have the training to back it up and your horse has the training to back it up. And let's talk a little bit about why. Newsflash people, the bits aren't the problem. Guess what is? Your hands. Your hands are the problem 100% of the time. If your horse has pain in the mouth, it's because you have too heavy of hands and you need to ride with softer hands. Switching to a bitless bridle is not gonna change the amount of pressure that is applied on your horse. If you have soft hands, use proper leg cues, and release pressure at the proper time, the bit's not gonna be the problem. The horse is just gonna carry the bit in its mouth and life will be just dandy. And I'm sorry, but you can't tell me that the bridge of a horse's nose is less sensitive than their mouth because it's not true. Let's think about it. Like other people have said on the internet before, a horse can feel a fly land on any part of them and twitch it off. So the nose is just as sensitive as the mouth. Now, bits. That's a whole other topic on its own. The only bit that I use on my horses are snaffle bits, and I'm not saying that that's the perfect option for every single person out there, because you do have some horses that need a little bit more bit, but you know what, again, back to the hands. The hands are the most important part of using a bridle and operating a bit. Let's talk about if shit hits the fan, like shit literally hits the fan. It's not some little bucking spree, it's not some little spook, like, like things get ugly quick, like they can. We've all heard about the bad horse accidents out there. Horse. Snow on the roof. <laughs> We've all, <laughs> that's, a pro that's a proper example. That could have caused a horse to take off. Back to it. If shit hits the fan and your horse takes off and you have a bitless bridle on and your horse is not completely in your rectangle and completely in your control, guess what? the likelihood of you and your horse getting injured is increased tenfold. Again, I repeat myself, I never said you should not ride bitless. I ride bitless pretty much all winter long. I ride in a halter and my lead line. So I'll show you guys in a little bit the setup that I use for that. All of that being said, the next topic, proper collection. If your horse does not know proper collection, and if you do not know what proper collection is, there is absolutely 100% no reason that your horse should be in a bitless bridle. Here's why. 
in the bitless bridles that they sell, the pressure is put across the nose band, right? So if you think, and it's actually down lower than where a traditional nose band on, say like an English bridle sits, it's set down lower, okay? So now you think that that is tied tight, right? It's cinched right down tight, just like on an English nose band, which I also disagree with, Another story, but that is cinched down tight. So you have constant pressure on the horse's face, constant pressure. That pressure never goes away. So where's the horse's release? Where's the horse's reward? Well, it's in your hands, but no, it's not. Because if you release and that bitless bridle is still cinched down tight, there's no release for the horse. There's a release for your arms, but that doesn't help the horse at all. Next, we've got the constant pressure for the horse. What do you think the horse is gonna do? So what typically horses do, they wanna find a release in pressure, so they search. They're gonna put their nose sideways, they're gonna put their nose the other way, they're gonna put their nose down way too far, they're gonna lift their nose way too high. What's gonna end up happening? They tip their nose, so this is how a horse should ride. If this is my horse's head, and this is the top of the horse's pole, this is the horse's nose, should be up and down. With a bitless bridle, horses tend to avoid the pressure by tipping their nose out, which then makes them fall heavy on the forehand. Again, if you don't know, that's a bad thing. Like, your horse should not be heavy on the front end. Your horse should operate from behind, which occurs when your horse, the top of their head and their nose is level. It operates from behind and they use their back end to push themselves forward. This is my experience, this is my opinion. I would love to hear yours and because I, I don't understand why so many people out there just avoid that part of horsemanship. Back to everybody saying that I hate bitless riding. Not true. This is what I ride in pretty much all winter long. Any type of pressure they get. Excuse me. Hey. Get your stuff. Sorry about that. Working through something there. All right, so here's my rope halter. Now, rope halter sits on the horse. <clears throat> the pressure is there when the reins are down or when, you pick, or when you pick up collection, right? But if I'm holding the reins up, look how floppy and loose this is. It just sits there. It doesn't cause the horse to have any type of reaction. If you pull on it or if you, like I said, ask for collection, it gives it a slight downward, which will then, so say my elbow is the horse's nose, you pick up on the reins, the horse feels that pressure, and puts their nose down. There's your proper collection. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the screen. There's your proper collection. <clears throat> this does not cause constant pressure on your horse's face. The other options that you would have is a side pull. Those are, I've had success using those before. I had one mare that I used that in all the time when she was older because she, you know, she was old. She didn't really need a bit in her mouth at that point anymore in her life. And we were just doing like, you know, lazy trail ride stuff. If you're riding in a basic rope halter, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna say not a nylon halter. Nylon halters are a whole nother topic, but they also have constant pressure on the horse's face, whereas a rope halter does not. But that's another topic for another day. <laughs> so rope halter, Bozelle, that's another good one that does not hold constant pressure on the horse's face. And also, like I said, a correct fitting side pull. Those three options don't have that constant pressure of the bitless bridle that they market today. The loose bitless bridle, because I know y'all gonna come at me for that. Your control is gonna be limited, and then they have the strap that goes up under the nose, so when you pull on that with your reins, you think about that pull, so if there's that strap that goes underneath the chin of the horse and it pulls up, 
Where's your horse's head gonna go? Just think. Just imagine if somebody put something under your chin like this and they pulled, your head's gonna go up. Which again, pops you out of the collection we talked about. So, that's my opinion. This is not based on hours and hours and hours of research, nor is this based on me actually owning any bitless bridle, because I don't. I absolutely don't. But I absolutely think that the fad is ridiculous and there's not a lot of common sense tied into it. So, I wanna know what you guys think. Comment down below and let me know the pros and cons that you found using your bitless bridles and what you think. Also, disclaimer, I will say that there are people out there who are capable of using a bitless bridle and having proper collection. I am not in any way, shape, or form saying that it is not possible. What I am saying and why I made this video and why I referenced it in my previous video is because the target audience that is being exposed to these things may not be capable of doing these things and I think that the proper message needs to come across. You cannot generalize that all bits are abuse and just like I cannot generalize that all bitless bridles are bad. Comment down below, let me know what you think and we will keep this conversation going. One of the most frustrating things that I was told was you're just hating on haters. You damn right I am. I got told that I shouldn't be hating on haters, it just causes more negative, blah, blah, blah. I respectfully disagree. I am not the type of person to stand around, ride the fence, and let that stuff be okay. I should just, you know, let it all be and be peaceful and that's how to change the equine community, but that's just not true, okay? So, sorry, I was holding the camera. Special's trying to help me. So if you allow someone to come up and poke you and poke you and poke you and poke you every day and you don't like it, but you just, you just tolerate it, do you think you're gonna be happy? Like, or do you think that person who's poking you is gonna change? No, too much has been swept under the carpet with some of these people and it's time that we start talking about it. I'm seriously not trying to be a jerk here. I literally do not know how to say her name. I'm not sure if it's Riley or if it's Raleigh. So we're gonna say Raleigh Link 14. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And I'm not gonna talk about her in every single video, but I need to say some things because pretty much every single person that was pissed off about my video was pissed off because I said something about Raleigh. What? And I got called a hypocrite. So let me let me read you. I, I googled just just to make sure I knew the proper term of hypocrite. Okay. The definition of a hypocrite is a person who pretends to have certain beliefs, attitudes, or feelings when they really do not. An example of a hypocrite is a person who says they care about the environment but are constantly littering. I'm not a hypocrite because guess what? I don't pretend to have certain beliefs and I don't pretend to have certain attitudes or feelings. I have to go talk to the source. No, you can't do that. Come on. Go on. Back to your stall. Get in there. All right, we're back. So, I'm, I'm not a hypocrite because I believe in what I said and my attitude's not fake and I meant what I said. So, back to Raleigh. I feel, and this is my opinion, and before y'all come at me again, y'all love her because she says her opinion and what she thinks, but I'm not allowed to do that apparently, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So, here goes. She has a platform. Like it or not, that platform is full of kids. And these kids range from the ages of 10 to 18. We'll cut the kid age off at 18. Really, the kid age, okay, 13. Either way, impressionable people. She has this platform. 
on this platform, whether or not her analytics say that her audience is older, I've been in the YouTube game just as long as she has, and I know that the analytics are skewed because those younger kids use their parents' accounts to watch YouTube. Back to my problem with her platform, because I know this is getting long-winded, but I just want the girl who is 20 years old and she has horse experience, that's great. The abuse she talks about and sheds light upon, that's great. What's not great is the way she's influencing these kids by talking about her boobs, by talking about getting high while working with her horse, by talking about being drunk and partying. These are not things that you as a responsible role model should be talking about and I, you know, I'm a parent, so I, it's, I'm allowed to have my opinion and I'm allowed to not like it, and I don't like it. Plus, back to the bitless bridal thing, where all of this stemmed from, no, not all of this, where this video stems from, she encourages people, or be, she bullies people into thinking something that isn't true, and people can say that that's, my facts aren't there, but her facts aren't either, because, if she doesn't understand the things that I talked about in this video ahead of time, then that's part of the problem. And that's again, a lack of horsemanship. Sorry, not sorry. If you continue to allow someone to do something unchallenged, they're gonna continue to do it. And I am the type of person who does not tolerate poor behavior in anyone, to quote Lothar Dove, I don't tolerate rudeness in a man. And that's just, <laughs> you're naughty. And that's just what I think. So again, my opinion, like it, don't like it, comment down below, let me know what you think. Oh, and I don't buy into people name calling either, so don't call me bad names. Doesn't do you any good. A lot of words were put into my comment section that were not taken from my mouth and people said a lot of things that weren't true. So I would encourage you to go take a look at those comments and watch that video back because it's kind of funny, like the things that people said I said when I didn't say them. If you're saying that I said something in a comment, I would suggest that you put a timestamp on it because I would like to see that. In conclusion to today's video, I'm not perfect. I've never claimed to be perfect. I am not a horse trainer. Never claimed to be a horse trainer. And I don't know it all. Nor did I ever say I know it all. I just wanna share the little bit of knowledge that I do have and have some good conversations about topics that the equine industry doesn't wanna discuss. I, I can be a smart ass sometimes and I can come off as a strong personality and I can come off as a person who has a lot to say and those would all be true things about me because I am and I do and I'm using this platform to do it. So join me for the ride, stay tuned for the next video and we'll see you guys then. All right, so back, <laughs> back to the topic, bridal is bits. No, back to the top, back to the topic, bridal is bits are bad. No, back to the topic, bitless bridles are bad. I wonder if I was saying bridal is bits this whole time.